still morning, right? Um, my name is Mikhail Verni. I'm a, I'm a doctoral student uh, here at Boston University. And uh, I'm going to talk about this activity that, in uh, my opinion, I hope, uh, improves retention and comprehension of difficult abstract concepts that we teach in health economics. And before I get into that, I would like to quickly acknowledge uh, Jim Burgess as well. Uh, Jim had been my advisor for five years and uh, <clears throat> taught me a lot. And I probably wouldn't be standing here without him. Uh, so thank you, Jim. Um, uh, okay, so we can we can start now. Uh, you may be wondering why, like, what a student is actually doing here, right? At a session about teaching health economics. Um, I'm uh, surprised as well. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, whoever selected my presentation, thank you. Uh, I, I teach. I actually do teach uh, introduction to uh, cost effectiveness analysis um, to graduate student at the School of Public Health, and I usually get a group of students with a variety or like a spectrum of backgrounds. There are some that are really good technical students, like they have strong background in statistics, econometrics, they're very likely much better than I am. Uh, but there are students who just didn't really, like maybe passed introduction to biostats, but didn't really get what that was about. <laughs> and, 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 that's, and, that, and, and, and that's fine, that's, that's fine, that, 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 that happens. Um, and um, I noticed in my teaching that there is this disconnect, inherent disconnect between teachers and students. The thing is that like, if you teach a course, th there are good chances that you probably understand the concepts. <laughs> and uh, students often don't. Um, and sometimes it's difficult for the teacher to actually see what the students don't understand. Because something can be crystal clear to you, but may not be as clear to the students. And this is especially the case for like, difficult abstract concepts. Uh, I forgot to click on this. Uh, one of those difficult concepts is, for example, probabilistic sensitivity analysis, or simulation in general. Uh, I found this description in, in a textbook. I'll, I'll just read it. A simula so probabilistic sensitivity analysis is a simulation procedure in which all input parameters are considered as random quantities and therefore are associated with probability distributions that describe the background knowledge of the decision maker. And um, if you know what this is about, it makes sense. Uh, but but, but if, if you don't, then like, it's just like a black box. So essentially, like you click on something on the computer and it gives you some numbers which you may or may not understand what, they're, what they actually mean. Uh, and uh, therefore, I developed uh, an in-class activity to, to convey the concept uh, little, in a little bit more tangible way than a description like this. Uh, because I, what I think and believe that uh, concepts that are actually uh, that are memorized <laughs> rather than comprehended are not retained over time. And uh, I don't want to get into like philosophy of teaching, like maybe you just want the students to pass the course, but I hope that we all try to teach students the concepts so that they, that they remember what the concept is about. Okay, so uh, what, what do you need for this, this activity I'm, I'm proposing? Uh, you need a large open space, so if you've got a classroom like this, you would be screwed. Uh, you, you have to ask for a different one, at least for this one class. Uh, you need a simple decision problem. Uh, so this is just one part of the problem. I'm, I'm using this like very simple made up problem about whether we should provide vaccination uh, against flu. Uh, so this is the no vaccination arm. And it essentially means like there are some chances of you getting flu. If you get a flu, it can be bad and you get in a, in a hospital or it can be just fine and you are treated at home. There are some probabilities, some costs, and utilities that are associated with the, with the outcomes. Uh, the, the vaccination arm is, like, has exactly the same simple structure, just uh, 
the chances of getting through are lower. And uh, uh, there are different costs because you have to pay for the vaccination for everyone. Uh, I was thinking if one decision node would be, uh, one, one chance node would be just enough. And that seems too simplistic. So something like this, just two chance nodes, seems to, to work just fine. Uh, when I do this in class activity, uh, I usually let the students work through this problem in a homework so that they're a little bit familiar with, with the problem. But it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, next thing you need is tape. It's a cheap thing to get. Uh, so that you can draw the structure of the tree, of the decision tree <laughs> on a floor. <laughs> then you put you know, some chairs or tables in each, each chance node and the ultimate outcome, the terminal node. Then you need dice. You, you can use like classic you know, cube, uh, but these dice, you can look for them as Dungeon and Dragons dice. <laughs> uh, and they're like all these different shapes. They're like, you know, like I think this one has like 20 sides, some has four, some has 12, 10. Uh, again, very cheap thing to get on Amazon uh, or elsewhere. So uh, I usually start with a simple, like w with an illustration of a simple deterministic model. So that means that you know students split into two equally sized populations, one for each each strategy, vaccination or not. And so let's say you know like I have 20 students here at the beginning, and then they like I ask them as a group to advance through the tree. So at first you know like given these probabilities, a quarter will get flu, three quarters won't. Uh, of those who got the flu, a fifth will get in a hospital. Four fifths will not, and uh, then you know, like they can calculate their each of them. So let's say this guy who got flu and got in a hospital has some costs, some utilities. Uh, then they can put it all together, you know, calculate the ICER, and you can show them that if you were to do this again, you would end up with exactly the same result because this is deterministic model. You always split them in one quarter and three quarters in the first node, and then in 20% and 80% later. The problem is that students are usually not perfectly divisible. So like, if you en end up with having like 17 students, that, that's bad. But you can still work around like the, you know, to come up with the numbers that actually work, or you can ask the students to pretend that there are maybe two more so that it, it actually works out. So this is just like to illustrate what I hope the students already understand at the moment when we get to this, this activity. Uh, but next, uh, next step would be like, let's demonstrate what a micro simulation is, or first, uh, first order <laughs> simulation. So you start with you know, all the students at the very beginning, same way. But now the first student gets you know, moved forward to the first chance node. And rolls a die, uh, rolls a die, and uh, you know you give them a probability distribution. So let's say if in this case the outcome is one, that means the student got flu and advances to the next one. Again, rolls a die. In this case, the outcome is five, so that means no hospitalization. The student end up ends up in this terminal node. That means there are some costs, some utilities associated with that particular terminal node. And then all of them do, do that one by one until everyone gets, so if you started with 20 students, you hopefully should have 20 <laughs> students somewhere <laughs> at the end. Um, and you can show them that once you introduce this uh, like aspect of chance, you don't always end up with the same numbers in the terminal nodes. There's no one in here, in, in the hospital, because in this one trial, just no one, some people got flu, but no one got in the hospital, even though the chance was 5%. So, so the probabilities are not always perfectly the same you would expect, uh, or like, the ultimate outcome is not the same as in 
deterministic modeling. Again, you know, then they can put all the numbers together, calculate the ICER, well, for the total cost, total effectiveness, then the ICER, put it together. Uh, then you repeat the drill, let's say like five times, so that you actually get some variation in the cost, in the utilities, in the ICER. And then they can, it's working, not so much. Put all the outcomes in a table, if you have a chance, a nice board, you can plot the outcomes on a board that really conveys the variation that we introduced with the stochastic modeling and shows the uncertainty that is inherent in, in modeling uh, cost-effectiveness problems. So uh, there are many variations you can, uh, you can actually adapt this, uh, this activity. Uh, First, I, I, I talked about deterministic modeling, I talked about first order simulation, but you can even like go further and introduce second order uh, simulation. That means you can have distributions of the parameters, of the probabilities of the cost of the utilities that will introduce even more variation in the, in the outcome. Uh, you can probably already see that you can set up a similar uh, activity for conveying what, uh, what a Markov model or Markov process is. And uh, what I noticed um, when I talked to the students after this activity, uh, be really careful to explain the difference between multiple trials, multiple runs through a simple decision tree and a Markov model. Because that, those two are very different conceptually. But when the students were running around the simple decision tree, some of them thought that they're getting in different health states. And that's not exactly the case. Those were different trials, let's say different universe, uh, and di di different outcomes of the same problem. So be sure that you distinguish between a simulation on a simple decision tree and a Markov process. Uh, I did get some really nice feedback. Uh, I didn't check if this student still remembers how probabilistic sensitive <laughs> analysis works, but I, I am hopeful. Uh, and I think I'm actually ending on time, so thank you so much for your attention. I did not, but I was thinking about it. <laughs> and the second thing is, it's, it's, it's to, to yeah. Emma, which is the idea of it. Can, I mean, this is the perfect sort of thing that would be a great resource to share. And if that's something that requires IE to put some resources into someone videoing Mikhail's session, um, or, you know. Yeah, I'm very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I know, people have great resources, yeah. but we can't rely on everyone to be just providing that to a central um, website for free, you know, you know, your own resource, get yeah, them to yeah. video yourself and all that. So maybe yeah. that's something to take forward. Well, that's something I definitely want to pick up later in the general discussions around there's definitely a movement towards our here um, supporting an online function where we can all share resources. And, and much of what we've talked about is doing is that absolutely about that ethos of us all sharing resources. So that's something I think we can pick up on this general discussion. But I think having, having younger kids, you may actually need the that a lot of the methods that we're using in the early years setting to get kids to understand concepts is to get them to run around the room yeah. to the corner. And just, it just, that's yeah. what this reminds me of. The, that's actually one I thing I, it, I, I wanted to mention <laughs> that it helps retention that, well, they, it's actually fun to do this. Yeah. Second, they get to run, so blood flow helps <laughs> actually, you know, your brain to work. And uh, another benefit is, of, of this exercise is that then you have all these dice you can use for the insurance game, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Wait, okay. economics of scale. Emma, can I make a quick note? If there's anybody who is not here in the first session and did not get one of these 